Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today we're going to be doing my March reading wrap-up. I read 16 books this month, so under what I wanted to do, but I think I read about the same amount of books as I brought into the house, so that's kind of how I'm going to do this, I think. I think I'm going to do as many books as I haul that month as the amount of books that I need to read. Um, and I think I hauled at least 16 books, maybe 20. I may be off. Um, but either way, I've got a huge stack here and I have a lot to talk about. So let's dive in. These are in order of least to most enjoyed. So to the books. Uh, the first one, you guys probably guessed that this was going to be my least favorite book of the month. This is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. I've done a whole review on this and I will link it up in the cards. Um, I... I, I just, I, I feel like it was a cop out and I feel like it was a story that had been told before. That was really what it came down to. So not amused. Not amused. Um, then I buddy read with Amanda Center, whose channel I will link up in the cards. This is The Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I really went into this with high expectations, not because I thought that the book was going to be fantastic because of the plot, but because it was Daphne du Maurier. I really think that I have, I've enjoyed all of other, all of the other books that I've read by Daphne du Maurier, but this one fell short for me. Um, I really felt that the story was kind of lame and a little bit predictable. Um, it left me wanting a lot of things done differently. I just felt let down by it. It's about a man named John who meets a man named Jean who looks identical to him and Jean steals his identity and he is stuck having to live Jean's life and see how the world progresses in living Jean's life and you kind of go from there and the relationship between him and Jean's family um, becomes stressful but then good. It's it's interesting. It's really well done but it's not, no, it's not really well done. It's not. I don't know why I said that. I just, I didn't like this book. I didn't like it. Then we have Scars Across Humanity. I will keep this on my shelf. There are some really great facts in here, really important information, really valuable stuff. I definitely think that this has some positive attributes to it that I really appreciate. That said, I think it's too Christian. I think that this book is too focused on the Christian world and the people that believe in Christianity and it really doesn't focus on women outside of Christianity and it really doesn't focus on women in some very important environments. Um, there are some countries that are just kind of looked over as far as the history of women and how damaged these women are. It, it was not a full all-encompassing women historical conversation about the violence against women and that bothered me because it felt like it should have been. It's a pretty decent sized book, but it's not massive. And I feel like if they had done it right, it could have been completely um, non-religiously judgmental and a lot more in depth on certain aspects of certain countries. And it could have been bigger and I would have been happy if they had just taken out the Christianity stuff. Like it just, it didn't, mm, it, it disappointed me. It just, it disappointed me. Then we have The Perfect Nanny. <sighs> I was in the mood for a thriller this month and I was really let down. I read four books that could be kind of thrillery and two of them were specifically new release thrillers. I was really hoping that after I read Bonfire, which I really enjoyed by Kristen Ritter, that I would be able to find books that were similar. Oh, there's a squirrel! Huh. Hoping to find books that were similar in terms of like, not plot, but like pacing and ideas and and themes and I just I haven't found it. Um, I I feel really disappointed. I'm not finding thrillers that I really enjoy. I like a good psychological thriller that talks about the psychology of people. This did that to a point. Um, the premises it opens with a woman um, crying and having vomited after she found her children dead and we are to find out how we got to that point. Um, the book is really interesting and it had some really valuable conversations about who you let into your life and motherhood but it didn't really floor me and I felt 
definitely let down by it. I wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people. If you like thrillers, then this is a good one. Um, but if you're only slightly in the mood for a thriller and you're looking for a really good one, I wouldn't say that this is the one to like reach for. It's, it's fine. It's just not great. Then we have this book. Oops, sorry, I'm knocking you over. This is Whiskey and Ribbons by Lisa Cross Smith. And I went into this. This is my My Lit Box. Um, I will link my My Lit Box unboxing in the cards. Um, it was My Lit Box book for this quarter or yes, this quarter. And um, I was really disappointed when I first opened the box. I didn't really show it. <laughs> but um, I, I wasn't like thrilled. I didn't feel really excited about this. It's a romance. It's contemporary. And it feels a little more like chiclet. Um, but then upon reading it, I was much more impressed than I thought I was going to be. It was really heartfelt and interesting. It's about a woman whose husband dies in the line of duty. And her brother-in-law moves in with her and then feelings start to arose between the brother-in-law and the wife and um, it kind of goes from there and you're rooting for all the characters and you're feeling really badly that she's having these feelings towards her brother-in-law but at the same time you're like ah it's not wrong but it's not great but it's not right it, it's really it's it gets you feeling and gets you moving and gets you kind of stirred it instills a lot of feelings and emotions in general I really appreciated it and I liked it the characters really kind of impressed me quite a bit and I definitely would read another book written by this author um I appreciated it and I wasn't I wasn't expecting to so I definitely enjoyed that even though it was a it was a nice surprise for me then we have this, which, you know, you would think this would be higher on my list of books that I enjoyed. Um, it's not that I have books that are so amazing, then everything's going to be incredible. I just, I didn't love this. Um, I thought I was going to. Everybody else I know has adored this. This is At the Mouth of the River, River of Bees by Kais Johnson. I thought this was going to be like a new favorite short story collection, and I just felt meh about the whole thing. Like, it's good. I gave it four stars, but I, I... I just don't feel immersed and encapsulated by it. I don't feel I don't feel that it was the most epic short story collection I've ever read. I just felt kind of eh, like I liked everything. Everything was good. It just didn't floor me and I I was kind of disappointed. I definitely feel like it's beautifully written. It's really well done. I have other Kai's Johnson books that I have enjoyed. Um, I like her writing. I just don't love her. I don't love her like some people do. So definitely a, a good book but not for me not a solid read for me. I'm gonna keep it on my shelf because there are some short stories in there that I really did enjoy um, and I want to be able to reread those but all in all it wasn't ideal for me. Then Jen was going to be doing a read-along for this. I couldn't remember the dates and I couldn't find the video that was the announcement. So hmm. I'm gonna link Jen's channel down below in the description box. So this Poor Things is about a man who is <sighs> Frankenstein, well, yeah, Frankenstein-esque, and he takes the brain of an unborn baby and puts it into the body of a full-grown woman, and then tries to work with her and falls in love with her and it gets really weird and twisted and it talks a lot about age of consent and the kind of creation of life and what's acceptable and what is in people's control and I really enjoyed it but I was a little turned off by a couple moments in it and I just I can't say them without spoiling it so I'm not going to but I just felt 
uncomfortable the whole way through. And I think that was the point. So I don't, I didn't knock any points off for making me feel uncomfortable because I think it was written to make me feel uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm letting that be what it is. And I'm just kind of accepting that it made me feel uncomfortable and going with that. Um, overall, I enjoyed it. It's one I will reread because I feel like it's one that has a lot of interesting themes in it that need to be dissected. I'm looking forward to Jen's talk on it so that I can kind of get more out of it from somebody who's read it several times and watched them dissect it. Um, but yes, I, I would say this is a, a good book overall. I did enjoy it. This was a reread for me. This is The Cuckoo's Calling and it is by Robert Galbraith and I had forgotten how much fun this was. This is the other thriller that I read. Um, I really had forgotten how much fun this was and I really enjoy these books. They're not perfect. They're not the best well-written things. They're not like epic. I, I wouldn't say that these are like prize winner books in any format but they're fun and they're interesting and they make me happy. And this is about a man named Corman Strike, who is an investigator and he meets his, oh, what is her name? Robin. There we go. And he meets Robin, who becomes his secretary and his kind of assistant. This is the story of a woman who commits suicide and her family doesn't believe that it is suicide and he has to investigate it. He's a little mad-eye moody-ish but you know he's just fun and lovable without being too lovable. It's just it's a good book. Like I just enjoy it. I'm not I wasn't looking for anything like deep and meaningful and wonderful because I'd already read a couple of books like that recently so I just I wanted something light and fun and easy and that was exactly what I needed and I enjoyed it immensely. Then we have Periods Gone Public Taking a Stand for Menstrual Equality by Jennifer Wise Wolf. I really enjoyed this. I definitely would recommend this. I think it is really well done. Um, it talks about periods and that's what it does. And it talks about being comfortable with talking about periods and being comfortable with the idea of periods and that periods are an important part of life and the cycle of life and they're relatively, um, not relatively, and they're really just periods and it's okay to have a period and it's okay to talk about your period and it shouldn't be a shameful subject. It's definitely a little repetitive at times because it feels like it is just that same topic repeated over and over again throughout the book. It's a little big for what it is but I loved it. I thought it was great and I really enjoyed having a whole book telling me it's okay to have your period. It's a natural thing. That's not awkward to say but yeah. I definitely enjoyed it. I would recommend it if somebody's interested in a different take on a feminist idea. Like it was it was a lot of fun. Shirley Jackson's The Sundial, apocalyptic wonderfulness, goodness and niceness and I loved it and it was fabulous and yes. I wouldn't say I don't love it as much as Haunting on Hill House and Bird's Nest but I did really enjoy this. And I liked Hangs a Man better too. This is my fourth favorite. <laughs> Which is not saying much because I've read four of her novels. So it is my least favorite out of all of her novels. But I still love it. And I still really enjoyed it. Um, it's another almost haunted house feeling. It's creepy. It's eerie. It's about a family that lives in this house. And they are kind of trying to like live through what feels like the apocalypse and it's just creepy and eerie and wonderful and I super enjoyed it. I really loved it. Difficult Women by Roxane Gay. I read this earlier at the start of the month. I really enjoyed this. I love Roxane Gay. This short story collection was fabulous. I apparently highlighted and underlined some things. Yep, apparently so. All about the Roxanne Gay. Like, love it, love it, love it. I think I have one book left of hers, or maybe I'm done. I'm not sure. But I've I've pretty much gotten Roxanne Gay's work under wraps. I've got her new book on pre-order, but it's not written by her. It's Essays on Rape that is coming out May 1st. I have that bad boy in pre-order, and I'm super excited about it. Super excited. So yeah. Um, this had some really great stories about race, about gender, about sexuality, about identity, about family, about crisis, about 
you know, in general, being a woman. Really brilliant, really wonderful. I loved it and I highly recommend it. Element was a really hard one to rate over difficult women. I felt I I honestly only rated this over difficult women because I felt like the conversation of gender identity was more forward in this book and really a lot more interesting in this book. I loved this. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was so well done. It's about a, two kids who are growing up with a man and he has anger issues and he is trying to identify what constitutes the owning of land and what is his and what is, you know, his to fight for. It was really interesting. The two kids are almost gender neutral. It was fabulous because they're raised outside of the constructs of society, which was just brilliant really enjoyed this, really recommend it. I can see why it's shortlisted for the Women's Prize and it was shortlisted for the Man Booker. Um, do I think it'll win? Probably not, but I would love to see it shortlisted again because it deserves a lot of hype and praise. If it wins, I'll be super happy, but like I definitely appreciate this one and I would recommend it to all of my viewers. Recommend it to all of you. Yes, yes. The only reason I'm not going to do a full in-depth review on that one is because you're going to see a lot of full in-depth reviews on that one because there's a lot of people reading the short and long list of the win. No, there's a lot of people reading the long list of the women's prize for fiction and they're doing reviews on all the books and you're going to see a lot of reviews because that's one of those books. So I didn't want to be white noise in the whole thing of it, the whole scheme of it. If you want to know my thoughts, I can do it, but I really think you're going to you're going to hear a lot about it. Haft by Liz Moore. I read this with Mercedes. I will link her channel down below. This Did I just say this is by Mercedes? It's by Liz Moore. Did I say that? I don't know. Anyway, this is a story of Arthur who is a 600 pound man who is a is a uh, hermit and he lives on his own in his home and he never leaves. He orders everything online and he's completely focused on being um, alone and not being out in public and he's very ashamed of his weight and he's very ashamed of his body and he feels very uncomfortable within it. And one day he gets a phone call from a woman named Charlene who he had a relationship with um, years ago and she sends him a picture of a boy and she says this is my son and I got married and I never told you and I'm sorry and I want you to help my son. Um, and so the story progresses from there. I really liked where this story went. I really enjoyed how it was. Um, and I really thought it was a good novel overall. I liked The Unseen World better, but I think that Liz Moore is an amazing writer and I will pick up anything she's written. If she has another book, I don't know if she does, I will pick it up. But otherwise, I will just anticipate her next release. I am very much happy with this book and I really enjoyed it. Ask Me About My Uterus, A Quest to Make Doctors Believe Women's Pain by Abby Norman. Abby Norman was repeatedly hospitalized for excruciating pain and she dropped all this weight and she was told she had a UTI or it was stress. She wasn't listened to. She was never really taken seriously. And then it turned out it was something else and she wrote a book about it. I adored this. I felt so connected to it because there are so many times, guys, I have ended up in the ER and I'm like, I have this excruciating pain. Tell me what it is. And they're like, you're fine. Go home. You're fine. And then like a week later, it's like, oh, wait, you have gallstones. Oh, wait, a cyst ruptured. Oh, wait, you have a pelvic muscle spasm. Huh. Good God, why don't doctors just check these things in the first place? So I really related to this book. I felt very strongly about it. I adored it. I thought it was fabulous. I really recommend it to everybody if you're interested in it. There's some medical aspects to it that are really fascinating. I absolutely adored it. Highly recommend. 
I am, I am, I am by Maggie O'Farrell. I loved this book. It was so human and so honest and so brilliant. And it's all about death and different stories about moments where you're facing death. And it was just so wonderful and epic. And I adored it. And I loved it. And oh my god, I can't say enough good things about it. It's so good. It was long listed for the Welcome Book Prize. It wasn't shortlisted. I don't know why. I am only assuming that everything on the shortlist is so absolutely epic that it's unbelievable because if it outdid this, then I don't know what, what I could possibly be looking at for the shortlist. Like, it must be amazing. They must be epic because this was epic. So you can only outdo an epic by being epic. Yeah, that's right. I said it. So yes, I absolutely love this. This is essays about coming face to face with death and experiencing death and it's so human and honest and and just bold and brilliant and I loved it and I think it's really wonderful. I think everyone should read this. I don't know if I'm going to read any other Maggie O'Farrell. If you think that there's another book that I should read of hers, let me know in the comments below. But I just loved her nonfiction and I don't know if her fiction is going to be the same. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Yes. And the only thing that could have topped that, Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. I am obsessed. This is my best book of the year so far. I am in love with it completely. I think it is brilliant. It is about a young girl named Sarah who has a relationship with a man named Matthew who is 20 years her senior and things go wrong and it is just terrible how he treats her and she is looking back on the experience of that relationship and how she feels about it now. She's not facing her problems. She's not addressing them head on. She's just kind of making mistake after mistake because of this trauma that she suffered. It is brilliant. It is wonderful. It is beautiful. I loved it so much. Please read this you guys. It is so brilliant and I just adored it. I definitely think it is beautifully written. I definitely think it is amazing. I want to read Louise's other books now because I've I missed the asking for it craze and I know I need to read it now so that'll probably happen next month. I just, I love her writing. I love her voice. I think it's brilliant and I just highly recommend it. If you can get your hands on it in the UK, do it. If you have the money and the funds to order it from Book Depository, do it. I definitely recommend it. Um, this is a buy. This is a buy in hardcover, rush out and get it book. I adore it. Love it. All right, guys. Those are the 16 books that I read this month. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button down below. Leave your comments and questions and quandaries down below in the comments. And I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye.